4,000 years into the future, humanity was nearly brought to extinction by giant Klaxosaurs, and their only chance of survival was by utilizing the Franks, an overpowered mecha that unleashes legendary powers when a guy rides a girl. However, after failing to get aroused while riding his partner Naomi, Hiro was considered to be the only worthless ugly loser in their world and Naomi was sent off for execution. As he walked around without anything left for him in this world, he saw a girl swimming inside the lake before vanishing away. Afraid she may have drowned, Hiro hurried to save her, but she flew out with a fish before licking his face, pushing both of them into the water. As she tried developing plot with him, she told him that she wanted him to become her darling, so she offered her hand and promised to help him reawaken his abilities. Realizing his chance, Hiro tried to take her hand, but a group of men appeared from the bushes and asked her why she ran away, so she told them that she needed a break. As they were about to leave, Hiro wondered what her name was, but since she didn't have one, she told him that her code name was 02 and disappeared from his sight. As he saw Naomi's body being taken for execution, a Klaxosaur appeared from the ground, causing Naomi's container to tumble out of sight. When it emerged, several cannons began shooting it, so it tumbled and crashed into the fortress, before wiping them out and causing Hiro to fall from the railing. When Hiro discovered that the monster was heading to destroy his friends, he started running after it, but soon realized that a second monster had joined the party. At the same time, one Klaxosaur tried blasting a teenage pilot, but was knocked away by a Franks that began tearing it apart. The Klaxosaur turned its tail into a giant machine and pushed her off before shooting an energy blast that was repelled by the Franks, causing a powerful light to explode and sent the robot flying towards Hiro. When he saw a wounded man fall out of the Franks, he discovered Zero Two inside of it, and she told him that the man was dead. He wondered how she would pilot it, so she told him that she would control it on her own. After all, she's always devoured her partners and never feared losing her life. However, Hiro offered to become her new partner, and told her that he also had nothing to lose if he died. So Zero Two told him they were alike, and said that she really likes him, and was looking to see him ride deep into her robot. <laughs> The Franks began to power up in that moment, and at the same time, the Klaxosaur charged towards the fortress. However, the Franks started pushing it back as it began upgrading from Hero and Zero Two's united souls, before hurling it away. At that instant, their Franks launched a spear into the second monster and began flying towards it. As they crashed into it, they released poison gas inside and blasted it, causing it to explode into thick smoke. With the monsters defeated, Zero Two came out of the Franks carrying Hero, and everyone recognized her as the partner killer. The following day, Hero arrived at the boarding home, and found Ichigo waiting for him. However, as he began to leave, she asked him if he really controlled the Franks in the battle, so he told her that he had no memories of the event, but was looking to pilot the robot again so that he would be certain. Ichigo told him that Zero Two's partners often died after their third ride together, and asked him to stay away from her so that he would not meet the same fate. But Hiro told her that he could not stop thinking about Zero Two, and was looking to ride her again. Another pilot called Goro appeared before him, and told him that Zero Two was in their dining hall. Inside the hall, the teenage pilots began staring at the girl as she ate like a useless creep and wondered who she was. Zorom, who was a hopeless worthless simp, decided to shoot his shot and told her that he wishes to ride her until he climaxed. However, she began to wipe her greasy hand on his clothes, causing him to scream like he was climaxing. Before long, she sat beside Hiro, and decided to ask for a taste of his meat. Realizing his chance, Hiro decided to ask her if he really controlled the robot. She told him that he did, and said that he was her darling, leaving the teenagers in shock. Nana entered the hall, and introduced herself to everyone, telling them that she was their new caretaker, and would be in charge of all their duties. As Zero Two began to leave, Hiro asked to ride her one more time since he only climaxed after a couple of seconds. However, Nana told him that only the headquarters could make the decision. Inside the elevator, Nana told Zero Two to stay away from Hiro and the other pilots, as she thought that she would be a bad influence to them. By the next day, Zero Two came across Ichigo and Goro, but after walking off, Ichigo decided to ask her why she chose Hiro for her partner. When Zero Two refused to answer, Ichigo told her to stay away from him, as she had no desire to see him abandoned with a broken heart. Seeing through her shitty lie, Zero Two began to stare at her and licked her face like a creep before leaving. That evening, Zorom kicked a ball at Hiro, 
and began to call him a weak useless coward who was pretending to be a hero like his dumb ass name. Angered by his words, Hiro faced off with him, but Ichigo and Goro hurried to separate them. After a few days, the sergeant told Hiro that he would be having a battle in a Franks, and that his victory would promote him to being a parasite. When he was told to choose a partner for himself, Zero Two offered to ride with him, but Ichigo said that she was a stranger to their group, and offered to ride instead, so Nana accepted. Disappointed by the outcome, Zero Two began to leave, so Zorom decided to challenge Hiro for the battle, hoping to humiliate him, and threatened to crush him like candy. That night, as everyone was gathered to watch their battle, Ichigo told Hiro to focus on strengthening his connection to her. Since they could only power up the robot through their emotional connection, she thought their best chance at success was for Hiro to concentrate on powering up the robot while she took charge of the battle. However, Hiro has never been able to connect with any girl because he is a lonely disgusting worthless virgin. Just like the protagonist from the story on today's sponsor, Web Novel. If you ever felt useless, just remember, little Willy William exists who was outraged when discovering that he was the only one who's a ver in his own letter. And the best thing about using web novel is seeing how everyone was clowning on William's lonely ass in the comments, for being a professional at one hand calisthenics. However, after waking up to meet the thousands of true gods of the world, he decided to become a follower of Gavin, another lonely god in this world who gave him the greatest broken system to master all professions. But the only downside was that he wouldn't live long enough to max out all of his job classes. But after Truck Kun literally ice guided him into a different world, he was reincarnated as an elf with one of the longest lifespans and slowly began drinking breast milk to level up. And if you want to go on more adventures with overpowered characters abusing broken systems, all you have to do is go on Web Novel's largest web novel community. So what are you waiting for? Download Web Novel through the link in my description, use the code system for reading more novels, and discover countless journeys. Thanks to Web Novel for sponsoring me. Because while William died without ever developing plot, it's better than remaining a lonely loser like Hero who never learned how to connect with a girl because he was too ugly. Damn! So they began to connect, and soon powered up the Franks as they started approaching Zorom's robot. Seeing that it was actually working, Hiro thought that they could win the battle, and suggested that they destroy their opposition immediately. However, as it drew its weapon, it fell before Zorom could slash it and mysteriously powered down. Inside the Franks, Hiro tried restarting it, but realized that it was hopeless. Ichigo asked him if she was the reason for him not being able to get up, and wondered how he was able to ride with Zero too. Hiro told her that their kiss had mysteriously brought the robot to life, but he had been too stupid to realize what they were really doing. Looking to give it a shot, Ichigo suggested that they kiss, so she covered his eyes and tasted his lips. When it was over, they realized that the robot was still asleep and that their kiss was a fake. Suddenly, Zorom kicked down their robot and tried ending it, but he froze in that instant and fell down. Angered by her disappointment, Ichigo began to power the robot on her own and charged forward with their opponent, before slamming it into the fortress and leaving both robots destroyed. Inside the Franks, Ichigo began to cry at her failure and called Hiro a useless moron as she was convinced that he did not make a genuine attempt to connect with her. The next day, when they came across each other outside the examination room, Hiro tried to apologize to her, but she was summoned at that moment. Later that day, Hiro told Goro that he would attempt riding with Zero Two for a second time. But Goro told him that he was risking his life after reminding him about all her previous partners who died in battle. However, Hiro was determined, and told him that he was completely useless if he was not piloting any robot. The following day, Hiro spotted Zero Two all by herself, but as he began to stare at her, she told him that she had been waiting for him and asked him to follow her. After she walked into a new passage, the system stopped Hiro from passing through. Zero Two revealed her S-Class ID that granted her access to every area of the facility, and as she hurried to Hiro, she held him and led him through the system. As they arrived outside, Hiro discovered a beautiful city before him, and wondered how Zero Two was able to discover it. She told him that she had been to several facilities, and knew her way around since they were all built in a similar structure. Hiro told her that he had never been into the city, since they were all born and raised inside the fortress, but was curious to see how it looked. He told her that he would like to give her a new name, but she told him that she liked her name, and jumped onto a pole before walking across it. She wondered if he would like to run away, and suggested that they escape from the fortress. But Hiro was too afraid to answer. The following day, Nana told the teenagers that they would be going on their first mission to annihilate lesser Klaxosaurs that had been appearing outside the facility. 
the sergeant told them that the Klaxosaurs were attracted by magma energy reactions, and that they had been appearing in the level 8 mine and destroying the system. Nana said that Hiro would not be joining them in the mission since he was not capable of piloting a robot and that they would have to rely only on themselves. Before long, they arrived at level 8 and started heading out. As they found a Klaxosaur devouring a system, Ichigo's robot began charging towards it, and as she stabbed it, she pulled it down so a second robot caught it, allowing Zorom to impale it. With their success, Zorom began to celebrate and said that the mission was like taking candy from a baby. Ichigo told him to destroy its core immediately, but as he tried to impale it, it jumped on his robot and began attacking it, causing Miku to fall unconscious. Luckily, Futoshi blasted it away, allowing Ichigo to stab the core. However, another Klaxosaur appeared before their eyes, and several other Klaxosaurs began appearing before them, realizing they had no chance at exterminating them. Ichigo suggested that they run away before they were killed by the monsters. At the same time in the facility, Zero Two told Nana that she was willing to rescue the pilots, so Hiro offered to support her. However, the sergeant said that Hiro was a weakling and would only cause more harm than good. Zero Two decided to confront Nana, looking to persuade her into accepting, but Nana told her that she was not allowed to pilot the Franks with Hiro. Mitsuru suggested that they ride together and told Nana that it was their only hope of rescuing the team. Since Hiro the loser could ride her like a man, Mitsuru thought that he could ride her twice as hard, but Zero Two told him to jerk off and said that his face looked like shit. Emotional damage! However, Hiro was ashamed and told Zero Two to ride with him, so she accepted and they began to leave. Meanwhile in level 8, Miku finally regained her consciousness, so the team supported Ichigo to hold a gate as the Klaxosaurs continued bumping into it. However, when the team learned that Zero Two was coming to their rescue, Ichigo thought that she was riding with Hiro, and her distraction caused her robot to power down, allowing the monsters to destroy the gate. So they started running away, while the monsters chased them. Before long, they discovered that they were trapped, and a huge Klaxosaur appeared before their eyes. But as it tried devouring them, Zero Two landed on top of it and impaled it, until it burst before them. As newer monsters began to gather, the Franks impaled another monster, and Mitsuru started calling himself the greatest pilot in history, and that hero was the most useless person he had ever met, as he began slashing and obliterating the monsters. Looking to test his full abilities, Zero Two decided to go all out in the battle, and faced off with another huge Klaxosaur. By the time the Franks was pulled up to the surface, Zero Two stepped out of it unscathed, but Mitsuru was left unconscious and badly wounded. The next day, when Mitsuru was looking like he had seen a ghost, Hiro decided to ask him what happened inside the Franks. Mitsuru told him that Zero Two was a crazy psychopath who tried to devour his soul, and as he caught Hiro, he warned him to stay away from her or she would end him like her other partners. That afternoon, Ichigo decided to ask Hiro if he was still bent on riding with Zero Two, as she feared that he would meet his doom if he continued pushing his luck. Hiro told her that he had no intentions of quitting, so she told him that she would not try to stop him anymore, and decided to leave. However, the following day, when Hiro saw Zero Two, he remembered Mitsuru's words and immediately hid himself. However, as he soaked inside a pool, Zero Two appeared before him and followed him into the water, asking him if he would like to develop plot with her. When Hiro was too afraid to answer, she told him that he was the only person fitting to be her partner, and that they could have special babies with his seed. But at that moment, an alarm started blaring across the entire facility. Outside the fortress, four robots began charging towards the Klaxosaur, looking to stop it before it got to the facility. When one of the robots began drifting back, the Klaxosaur worm chased it, but another robot impaled it in a trap. As it tried freeing itself, the other robots caught and stabbed it before wrestling it to the ground. With the monster down, the team wondered if they had defeated it as they could not find its core. However, it suddenly caught Zorom and trapped the team with weird objects. Ichigo tried hurrying away, but fell in the sand and became stuck with the rest of the team. At the same time, Hiro and Zero Two hurried to Nana, hoping to join the battle, but she told them that their presence was not required. At that moment, a group of soldiers arrived and surrounded Zero Two, telling her that the headquarters was demanding for her return to the front lines. But when a soldier touched her, she smacked him far across the room, causing the others to point their lasers at her. Realizing the odds were against her, Zero Two told Hiro that she would be leaving for a different facility, but was sad that she could not stay by his side, so she told him goodbye and began to leave. 
After she was gone, Hiro asked Nana if Zero Two truly killed her previous partners inside the Franks. Nana told him that Zero Two was a special girl who was being utilized for battle at the front lines, and that every battle took a nasty toll on her partners and caused them to die. She said that Zero Two was a strange alien from an unknown planet, and that her abilities could not be compared to a regular human. Hearing these words, Hiro realized that he had misjudged her intentions and started running off. Before long, he began screaming her name and banging the system, but she walked away from him. Desperate for her to listen, he began reciting his best Reddit pickup lines and told her that she could become his Discord kitten. Since she had helped him regain his ability to get up, he wanted to ride her until he climaxed and released all of his energy into her body. Hearing these words, Zero Two stopped walking, pleased to have heard his confession. As she jumped onto a soldier, she pulled his gun and began firing at the glass before jumping towards it and breaking inside. She told Hiro that no one had ever recited a love poem to her and asked him to say it one more time. So he told her that he wanted to ride her until he climaxed his energy into her. Delighted with his confession, she suggested that they save the team first. Rushing forward, Zero Two kicked a soldier and they began hurrying to her robot. As they prepared to power it up, Nana told them to return immediately, but Zero Two told her to screw herself and turned off the communication. Before long, the Franks emerged and flew off towards the battle. With rocket speed, she knocked into the Klaxosaur, finally freeing the team. Hero told them that he would destroy the monster's tail, so the team decided to take on its head. As the monster launched weird objects at the Franks, she blocked them and pulled down the tail before releasing gas into it. However, they discovered that the core was missing, so as it vanished into the ground, the Franks chased after it. Before long, she emerged from the ground and as she slammed its tail, a great worm appeared out of the ground and crashed on the sand. Looking to end it, Ichigo jumped on top of it and stabbed its tail. Realizing their opportunity, the rest of the team stabbed it and managed to pin it down, so Hiro decided to end it. As the Franks freed herself, she jumped across to the other side and went through the monster, destroying it from the inside, and emerging with the core as it exploded into a thick smoke. That night, as the system announced that two facilities would be combining in a kissing procedure, Zorom began to wonder if they would have to kiss each other. So Akuno told him that the procedure involved transferring of magma fuel reserves from one facility to the other, as the fuel was used in running the robots. When the team began to look worried that the Klaxosaur would attack them, Hiro told them that he would protect them with his francs. A few days later, the team had their graduation ceremony and were promoted to Parasite. But by the following morning, Goro noticed that Hiro was looking sick. So in the bathroom, he decided to ask him how he was feeling, but Hiro told him that he was fine. In the lounge, the team thanked Hiro for coming to their rescue in the battle against the Klaxosaur, but he only wished for them to consider him a member of their team. However, when Zorom began to say that he was merely lucky in the battle, Hiro decided to make peace with him, realizing that the kid was merely a useless moron, so they shook hands. As they began heading into the dining hall, Zero Two appeared before Hiro and led him to a table for their breakfast. After spilling grease on the food, Zero Two fed Hiro with a bite. <coughs> Inside the boys' dorm, Zero Two began jumping on a bed and told Hiro that she would be living with them inside the boarding home. But her news left the boys in shock. Realizing the boys were uncomfortable with her presence, Hiro decided to lead Zero Two away. That evening, Ichigo showed Zero Two to a new room, telling her that she would have to sleep here and follow all their rules if she intended to continue living with them. However, Zero Two thought she was trying to control her and told her that she would rather stay with Hiro and cuddle him in his bed. Meanwhile in the bathroom, Hiro was feeling very sick and as he touched his heart, he knew that something was terribly wrong with him. After Goro found him sick in their room, he opened his shirt and discovered a large scar across his heart. But as he tried activating their emergency alarm, Hiro stopped him and after having a glass of water, he told Goro that he was still determined to ride the Franks once again. Goro thought that he was crazy, and reminded him that he could die in his next attempt. But Hiro said that he had never felt more alive, and asked him to tell no one about his health status as he thought it would jeopardize his chances of ever piloting a robot again. The next day, the sergeant told the team and another team that a hundred Klaxosaurs had been discovered several miles away, and that they were approaching the fortress at a great speed, since they intended to carry out another kissing procedure. He told them that the new team would be protecting both facilities while Ichigo's team would serve as their backup. As Hiro and Zero Two entered the room, Nana said that they would be joining in the mission. However, the new team thought that Zero Two was a useless menace who did not care about her allies, 
and one of the boys began saying that they would not head into the battle with her since she had caused the death of his partner a few years ago. Zero Two told him that she had no memories of his friends since she had lost too many partners to count. Angered by her words, the boy tried approaching her, but Hero stood in his way and promised to keep her under control. That night, while the team were heading back to their boarding home, Goro tried suggesting that they cast Zero Two aside from their team. But Hiro interrupted him, realizing that he was about to disclose his secret, and said that it was better to keep Zero Two as their ally. That same night, Hiro began to shiver in his bed as his sickness continued to get worse. Frustrated by this discovery, Goro decided to sit outside the boarding home, but soon spotted Ichigo and Zero Two heading towards the forest. Ichigo told Zero Two that she must stay in line when they head out for their mission, but Zero Two told her to screw herself and began to leave. However, Ichigo managed to stop her, and told her not to push Hiro beyond his limits so that he would not die like her other partners. Zero Two told her to mind her business, and called Hiro her darling, saying that he had chosen her for his partner and that his death would mean nothing to her. Hearing these words, Ichigo smacked her face and called her a heartless psychopath. Immediately, Zero Two's eyes began to glow with anger as she threatened to destroy Ichigo. But luckily, it began to rain, so Zero Two looked to the sky in surprise and forgot about her rage. When Ichigo returned home, she found Goro waiting outside as he threw her a blanket to dry herself. He told her that he had seen her arguing with Zero Two, but had decided to stay away from the conflict. She began to tell him that she felt useless as she could not connect with Hiro emotionally, and thought that something must be wrong with her and began to cry. The following morning, Hiro met Zero Two at the river and reminded her that this was where they first met. As she opened his shirt, she saw his scar and decided to ask him if he would like to quit being her partner since their third ride together could be his last. However, Hiro remained determined and told her that he would be her ride or die and would continue riding her until he released all of his energy into her. Excited by his words, Zero Two began to laugh as she spun before him. The next day, as the team began heading out for their mission, Goro pushed Ichigo off to speak with Hiro, but as Ichigo stood before him, she began to stutter. Hiro spotted Zero Two in the hallway and decided to wave to her, causing Ichigo to lose her focus. So when she tried speaking again, she told him that she considered him to be her brother and was hoping to see him return from the battle alive. Hiro told her that he considered her to be his sister and also hoped that she would return safely from the battle before running after Zero Two. As Ichigo prepared to power her robot, she told Goro that she intended to keep Zero Two away from the battle. Outside the fortress, the teams watched as a large army of Klaxosaurs began approaching them, so the first team decided to lead the battle. As one robot launched a spear towards a monster, another jumped high and impaled it until it exploded. Immediately, three robots launched arrows into another, allowing the leader to spear it until it erupted. The leader suggested that they eliminate the monsters one after the other, so he broke a Klaxosaur's leg, allowing his team to bind it while he ended it with his spear. After spotting three other Klaxosaurs taking a different direction, the leader told Ichigo's team to eliminate them, and warned them not to bring their losing streak into this battle. As a Klaxosaur began approaching them, Futoshi tried blasting it, but it dodged and devoured him. Ichigo began firing at it, but as it avoided the blast, Zorom tried impaling it but missed and crashed into Mitsuru's robot. As two monsters tried ripping Futoshi's robot apart, another tried devouring them, but Ichigo threw it to the ground and ended it in that instant. A new monster began running towards the fortress, so Ichigo told Zorom to chase and eliminate it. Meanwhile, Hiro was very sick and was in a lot of pain, as a new set of Klaxosaur army started approaching the facility. Zero Two told him that Ichigo's team were running around the battlefield like brain-dead morons, and that she could not wait to join the fight. Hiro wondered why she always enjoyed destroying the Klaxosaurs, as he noticed that it made her happy like a creepy maniac. She told him that she was a monster, and that she loved the adrenaline that came with every battle. Determined not to be a spoil sport, Hiro suggested that they join the battle immediately, so Zero Two agreed. As the Franks flashed into the battlefield, she stacked up several monsters into a tall line and obliterated them in an instant before impaling another and destroying it with a slash. The Klaxosaurs began firing at her, but she blocked and jumped away before destroying them in a flash. Realizing their advantage, the second team bound another monster and electrocuted it until it exploded. After the Franks destroyed another monster, Hiro became very sick, causing the robot to become stiff and unable to move. However, she soon came alive, and began slaying the monsters with swift movements, so Ichigo ended the last. 
Ichigo told Zero Two to withdraw from the battle, but Hiro insisted that they would continue. With all the lesser monsters defeated, the second team decided to bind the last Klaxosaur and electrocuted it, causing it to stop moving. When they electrocuted it again with a great light, a mighty noise rang across the battlefield, and before their eyes, it began to transform into a strange humanoid shape. As it stepped forward, the second team launched their arrows into it, but it swung them away and smashed them into the ground. With the team leader about to be Isekai'd, Zoro managed to rescue him and put him in a safe spot. Realizing they were the only team left, Ichigo suggested that they restrain the beast so that Hiro could end it, since only his robot had the weapon to find the beast's core. So they split up and began climbing on the monster, hoping to stop it before it reached the fortress. At the same time, Hiro was trying to endure his pain, as large veins began appearing across his body. However, he was determined to continue, so as the team managed to weaken the monster's knees, the Franks began descending towards it with her spear. And as she stabbed it, Hiro tried forcing the spear with all of his strength and released a gas inside it, causing the monster to fall. Believing that the monster was dead, Hiro passed out from exhaustion. However, it knocked the Franks far away towards the fortress and began transforming into a new shape. With Hiro unconscious, the Klaxosaur prepared a mighty attack and launched the Franks into a wall causing it to power down in that instant. As the robot tried getting out, the Klaxosaur started pounding it relentlessly. Ichigo realized that Hiro may be dead, so she began to cry, afraid that they would never see him again. However, Goro began to scream at her and told her to get her shit together. Meanwhile, Hiro's soul was in a different world as he discovered that he was dead. Naomi appeared behind him and accused him of giving up on Zero Two the same way he gave up on her. Hiro said that he was now useless since he was dead, and believed that Zero Two could fight the battle on her own. Suddenly, he saw Zero Two standing at the tree before him, but when he tried to touch her, she began walking away from him, making him realize that she was very sad. At that moment, he opened his eyes and found Zero Two trying to fight all by herself, but was knocked back as the monster continued ramming into the Franks. However, Zero Two continued fighting like a crazy beast from hell, enduring all the pain and relentless smashing. And at the sight of this, Hiro realized that Zero Two had always fought in the same manner every time she lost a partner, so he became determined to help her, and to ride deep inside her again. As life returned into his eyes, the veins vanished from his body, so he held her as she began to scream, and restored her to her right mind. He told her that he would always stay by her side, and would never leave her again. And at that moment, the Franks revived and began crushing the Klaxosaur, but as it started changing shapes again, the team began flying towards it, determined to stop the transformation. So they held it apart, revealing its core to Hiro who began flying towards it with a great speed, and as the Franks went through it, it stabbed the core, causing the monster to rise with a light that looked like wings before exploding into thick smoke. Inside the Franks, Hiro told Zero Two that he wishes to be her wings so that she would never have to fight on her own. As they started heading out, happy to see their friends again. After a few days, the team were allowed to go on a vacation to the beach, as their reward for destroying the Klaxosaurs, so Zero Two pulled Hiro into the water and began splashing on him. However, a few days after the battle, Hiro was introduced to Dr. Franks who was the creator of the robots, and to another dude who told Hiro that he was very lucky to be alive. When the sergeant told Hiro and Zero Two that the headquarters had decided to make them partners, Zero Two immediately hugged Hiro as she was happy to hear that. At the beach, Hiro began following Zero Two as she swam farther into the water. She told him that he had helped her discover the ocean by becoming her partner. She said that she wants him to always stay by her side, and decided to lick his face. When he began to stutter, thinking she intended to kiss him, she told him that a kiss meant that they belonged to each other, and that he should only kiss whomever he loves. When she asked him if he had ever kissed another girl other than her, Hiro began to stutter again and was luckily pulled into the water by his friends. Before long, they carried him off to the beach, and after throwing him to the sand, Zorom decided to ask for the meaning of a kiss. As Hiro tried sneaking away, Zorom grabbed him and persuaded him to tell them, so he said that they had to stick their mouth in someone else's mouth. Shocked by this discovery, Zorom decided to ask if kissing was a special act. So Hiro told them that it was a sweet and warm feeling that he wished would never end. Looking to experiment this, Zorom tried to kiss Hiro, but he told him that he should only kiss whomever he loved. When Ichigo appeared wondering what weird shit was going on, Goro told her that they had learned the meaning of a kiss, and asked her if she had ever tried it, but she told him she hadn't. At that moment, Miku began calling on to them, and before long, they arrived at a cave, surprised by their discovery. 
As they climbed up the steps, Goro asked Hiro if the boys could become love partners with the girls, since he had told them that kissing was a special thing to be done with their partner, but Hiro was uncertain about it. As they arrived at an old abandoned city, they began to wonder what must have happened to the people who lived here. After spotting a large house, Zoro, Futoshi, and Mika decided to enter. As they looked around, they discovered that the house looked similar to their boarding home, and wondered if their home was intentionally built with this design. Meanwhile, Kokoro wandered into another part of the house and found an old book on the floor. As she cleared the dust, she was enchanted by the drawing of a baby, but Mitsuru saved her from getting hit by a board. However, she continued to hold the book. At the same time, Ichigo found a drawing of a kissing couple and began to remember her kiss with Hiro, but Zero Two appeared behind her and told her that she had kissed him. When Ichigo said that she had also kissed a boy, Zero Two told her that she was only meant to kiss a special person and demanded to know who she had kissed. Luckily, Goro called on to her from across the street, saving her blushes. As they arrived on a cliff, Zorom wondered how the city was able to exist. Zero Two told them that the city was abandoned by humans when Klaxosaurs began to appear on Earth, and that there were several other cities across the world that were all abandoned. That night, after their dinner, Zero Two told Hiro that she wanted to swim, and began hurrying away to the ocean. A few minutes later, as they sat around the fire, Hiro wondered why humans had decided to abandon their cities rather than protecting themselves from the Klaxosaur. And since the Klaxosaurs were attracted by the magma energy, he wondered if it was worth losing the Earth for. However, Zorom believed that it was a worthy risk, and thought that it made them saviors of the world. That night, while everyone was asleep, Ichigo saw Hiro as he was trying to sneak away, so they decided to stroll across the beach together. As she showed him the stars, she told him that he used to read her stories about them when they were little, but Hiro had no memories of it. However, after spotting another star, Hiro remembered that they had named it after Ichigo's code, and had promised to see it together after leaving the fortress. As they started walking again, she told him not to focus all his attention on Zero Two but to focus some of his attention on her, and that their kiss inside the robot was very special to her. However, as she tried telling him that she would like to stay by his side forever, Hiro suddenly pointed at the shooting stars across the sky. As they watched the stars, Hiro told her to make a wish in her heart, but she thought that he was a moron for not listening to her confess her desires. A few days later, the team started battling another Klaxosaur. As one robot dodged its attack, Zorom jumped on top of it and began stabbing it before Futoshi blasted it. Realizing their chance to defeat it, the team started charging forward but the monster spilled slime on them. However, they discovered that the slime was harmless to their robot and thought of attacking again. But it began streaking inside and melting off the girls' suits. Realizing they were about to watch some beautiful plot unfold, the boys stared really hard like their lives depended on it. However, Zero Two was able to scream at Hiro and reminded him of the monster before them. So they rushed towards it, and as they blocked off the slime, they slashed it to dust. By the time they returned to the facility, the boys began apologizing to the girls for enjoying the sight of their beautiful plot, but the girls thought they were useless pervs and told them to stay away forever. So later that day, they drew a line across the house, and Miku told the boys that they were not allowed to step across to the other side. However, Zorom decided to challenge their command, and tried walking across, but the girls threatened to beat him to a pulp. By the following day, the girls discovered that the boys had occupied the dining hall, and were beginning to eat all the food. When Goro suggested that they call off their stupid rules, the girls refused and began to pull Miku away, but Zero Two merely crossed the line into the hall. That afternoon, the girls decided to search for some food, but as they walked through the first floors for their very first time, they discovered that several rooms had been sealed off. Ichigo wondered how much longer they would have to continue fighting the Klaxosaurs, since the battle was starting to look like it would never end. As Zero Two licked her neck, she told her she could taste her secret, but the girl thought she was a useless creep who was meant to live inside a jungle. The girls decided to speak with Zero Two in private, and asked her to join their fight with the boys. Having spotted her with Hiro, they thought she was making their decisions irrelevant by breaking their rules, so Zero Two agreed to join their stupid fight. But the following day, she ripped off the restriction notice and told the boys that the girls had called for peace as she changed the girls' sign to the boys. But when the boys entered the bathroom, they found the girls inside, 
and they began hurling items at them, calling them filthy dirty pervs. When Zorom tried explaining what Zero Two had told them, Hiro saw her stealing their clothes and sprinting out, so he chased after her. After demanding for the clothes, she told him to take it if he was a man. As he ran to grab her, she slid down the handrail and started running up more steps. Hiro chased her into the lounge, but she flipped across the room and ran through the hallway. As Zero Two climbed up the roof, Hiro followed her to the edge, realizing she had nowhere to run. But she released the clothes into the air. Hiro thought she was weird and wondered why she had decided to steal everyone's clothes, so she told him that she merely intended to have some fun. As she began to lower herself like she was about to fall, she caught the house frame and easily helped herself to the ground like a badass bitch. Inside the house, Nana told the teenagers to handle their business without messing up, and suggested they make peace with each other since they would have to leave for a new battle soon. In the girls' room, Ichigo demanded to know why Zero Two had tricked them, so she told them she was trying to help them become responsible parents. With the girls confused by her words, she began to leave, and told them they would all be dead soon. At the same time in the boys' room, Hiro suggested that they make peace with the girls, and began to deliver a powerful speech on how the girls save their asses in battle by powering up the robots with their frail bodies. The boys thought that the girls would make good wives, and agreed to make peace with them. In the meantime, the girls wondered what Zero Two was trying to tell them, but were uncertain about the meaning of her words. So Kokoro decided to restore peace within the team and began telling them that they needed the boys as much as the boys needed them, and that they make a happier team when they are pleased with each other. But Miku thought they were better off staying apart, and decided to leave the room. Afraid she may have ran away, the girls decided to ask the boys for their support, so that they could find her. Meanwhile, Miku was hiding in an abandoned room, when she spotted an old photo of another team that had once lived on this floor. Shocked by her discovery, she dropped the glass, and her friends kicked the door in. As they wondered who had stayed in this room, Zero Two revealed that it had belonged to a previous team that had died in battle. With the team hoping not to become the next Sushi, they decided to make peace with each other, and Zorom told Miku that he would be sneaking into her bed to feel her beautiful plot every night. A few weeks later, the team received a present from the leader of the forces. When Zero Two wondered why they were given a present every year, Hiro told her that it was an attempt to encourage them for their hard work. Later that day, Goro found Ichigo spying on Hiro as he gave Zero Two a present. Hiro told her that he felt sad since she had not received any and was hoping to make up for it. He told her that the mirror had belonged to his previous partner Naomi, who had left the facility after her injury. Fascinated by the gift, Zero Two threw her arms around Hiro and told him she loved it and would cherish it forever. But Ichigo was sad and wished she had received the gift instead. Goro remembered that when they were little, they had noticed Ichigo's hair was beginning to grow long, so in a desperate attempt to impress her, he had hurried to make her a hair clip, but discovered that Hiro had beat him to it. He felt sad that he had always liked her, but was too afraid to tell her. Inside the boy's room, Hiro saw Goro holding the clip, and wondered why he had it with him. Goro told him that he had been hoping to give Ichigo the clip ever since they were little, but had been too ashamed to do so. When Hiro wondered why he was afraid to tell her how he felt, Goro told him that Ichigo had always liked him, and had desired to stay by his side the same way Zero Two was always by his side. Shocked by his words, Hiro began to stutter, but Goro told him that he loved Ichigo, and had always hoped to be with her forever. Having said these words, Goro told him that he was ready to sleep and immediately laid down. The following day, the sergeant told them that a Klaxosaur had been discovered a few miles away and was fast approaching the fortress. Nana told them that their duty was to destroy it before it reached their spot, so that it would bring no damage to the fortress. Before long, the team headed out in their robots, and began approaching the monster. After spotting a massive thundercloud, they saw a great Klaxosaur in the clouds, moving towards them like an alien spaceship. Hoping to destroy it, Zorom began charging towards it, dodging his way through the tentacles and slashing it, but got trapped in them. Luckily, he managed to break free, but a bomb exploded on him. However, he spotted the core and thought it would be easy to destroy it, so he flew towards it but was engulfed by the weird bubbles before he could smash it. Ichigo flew towards him, and punched him to safety but ended up trapped in it. As the Klaxosaur began to sparkle with bright lights, it erupted into a massive explosion. When Goro woke up inside the robot, he decided to turn off the warning alarm, and remembered that he had ejected Ichigo right before the explosion. Hiro began to speak to him through the calm, and told him that Ichigo was safe, but that he was trapped inside the Klaxosaur's belly and was becoming its breakfast. 
Hiro told him that the rest of the team had withdrawn to the facility and that they were not certain they could save him. Their only hope for rescuing him was through his robot, but with Ichigo out of it, it was impossible to power it up. As Ichigo hurried into the room, she demanded for Goro to be rescued immediately and told them that he was an ugly brain-dead moron who only did stupid things because his face looked stupid. The sergeant told them that Goro was stuck in the monster's fuel tank and was lucky to still be alive. He said that their priority was to protect the fortress and that they would have to destroy the Klaxosaur with Goro inside of it. However, Ichigo was afraid of losing her partner and told them that she was willing to save him, so Zero Two suggested that they utilize the exhaust hole on top of the monster. So they returned to the battlefield, and as Zorom launched the Franks to the top, Ichigo dived inside it and began swimming deep into the fuel. At the same time, Goro was finding it hard to breathe and began to remember when he was a little boy. He had gotten his ass kicked off him, but was usually saved by Ichigo who thought he was too weak and useless to do anything on his own. He had fallen in love with her from that moment, but was sad that she had always loved Hiro instead. When he was ready to isekai himself, he decided to activate the self-destruct system, but luckily, Ichigo entered the robot at that moment. She reminded him that she had promised to save his sorry ass since he was always weak and useless without her. Goro was happy to see her and offered to hold her hand. And at that instant, the robot came to life and released an explosive device before flying towards the surface and escaping to the outside. As they began rushing back to the fortress, the Klaxosaur erupted into a massive explosion. With peace restored, Goro decided to give Ichigo the hair clip and told her that he had been waiting to give it to her ever since they were little. He said that he loves her and wished to spend the rest of his life with her. However, she told him that she only considered him to be her friend. After returning to the facility, Hiro noticed that Zero Two was looking sad, but when he asked her what was wrong, she told him that she was merely worried about dinner. By the time Zorom and Miku began screaming at each other, Nana appeared and told them she had good news for everyone. Before long, she began telling them about an invitation into the city by the leader of the forces, and that they would be awarded for their success in the battles. With the team impressed by the news, they thought they would finally meet all the adults in the city. However, Zero Two was not impressed and began to leave, so Nana told her that she would be undergoing medical tests in the city. But Zero Two told her she had no desire for undergoing any tests, and that she was as healthy as a horse. The following day, as the team were prepared to leave, Hiro noticed that Zero Two was sad and was unwilling to go. As they began descending into the city, the teenagers thought it looked very beautiful, and wished they could live here for the rest of their lives. When they arrived inside the headquarters, they were welcomed by a weirdo in mask. He told them that the leader was pleased with their achievements in the battles, and that they were the most special team in the forces. But after he left, the teenagers wondered why there was no feast to celebrate them. Nana told them that the headquarters does not allow any feasts, and that they had to return to the facility immediately, so the girls suggested that they walk home so that they could have a better view of the city. As they started heading back, Zorom told the team that he was eager to become an adult, so that he would live in the city. But Ichigo thought they wouldn't survive the coming wars and would not be growing up any more than they already had. When they arrived at their energy source, the team were impressed by the sight of it, and wondered who must have created it. But by the time they began to leave, Zorom stayed back and started climbing up a building. The lift began to rise, and as he reached the top, he discovered that he could not find his way down. So he went around the building, hoping to find an exit, but realized that this city was a ghost town. As he looked around the city, he spotted an adult walking by, but the man merely ignored him. Having no other options, he began climbing down the building. However, he saw another adult staring at him and lost his grip before falling to the ground. When he woke up in a strange home, the woman told him that she was afraid he may have cracked his skull and thought he would never wake up again. Zorom wondered if he was in an elderly home, but the lady told him that elderly homes don't exist in the city and that she must inform the forces of his whereabouts. However, he told her that he just wanted to ask some questions so she agreed and took off her mask. As he was eating her delicious food, he wondered if she lived alone in the apartment, but she told him that she lives with her partner even though they barely saw each other. Hearing about her partner, he wondered if she also piloted a robot with him, but the lady told him that they don't pilot a robot, and that her partner was like her husband, whom she was meant to make babies with. Zorom did not understand her words, as he had never thought that a boy and a girl could do anything other than piloting a robot together, so she offered to show him her partner. 
inside a room. They found her partner lying in a weird machine, so she told him that he was activating his brain for some creepy pervy pleasure. Suddenly, the lady fell, and she told him that she was tired and was beginning to feel dizzy. While resting in the lounge, she told him that she had not spoken to anyone in several years and had nearly forgotten how to talk to people. Zoram wondered how often she spoke to her partner, but she told him that she had not heard his voice in many years. She told him that they only stuck to their personal business and never even felt the need to greet each other. When Zoram began complaining about his own partner, the lady suggested that he find someone new. However, Zoram didn't want her to be replaced, so he said that she was the love of his life and that he would not trade her for the whole world. Those words kept making the lady feel worse, so she decided to report his whereabouts on her system, telling him that the forces would arrive soon, and wondered why he was starting to cry. He thought that she looked familiar, and asked her if they had ever met before. However, she believed they had never seen each other, and called him a hero for joining to protect everyone in the fortress. But a buzzer rang in that moment. Before long, two men from the forces began checking Zoram for infections and thought that he was too filthy to be in their city. After Zoram returned to the boarding home, he began to scrub the toilet as a punishment for ditching the team and Miku screamed at him for being a stupid useless dumbass. After a few days, the team returned from another battle and Ichigo told Nana that they had eliminated several Klaxosaurs and were looking forward to the next battle. The sergeant told them that they would be taking on a new set of Klaxosaurs the next day and told them to get enough rest. By the following day, the team watched as a great machine began excavating the ground. As they learned that newer Klaxosaurs were beginning to approach them, the team readied for the battle, but one robot powered down. Inside the robot, Mitsuru was looking very sick and had passed out from exhaustion, so they brought him into the facility for treatment. That night in his dream, he remembered he had been very weak when he was little, and had been told that he was too useless to become a pilot. So in hopes of getting stronger, he had taken a lethal injection that he managed to survive. However, when he asked Hiro to become his riding partner, Hiro told him that he was only interested in riding with a girl who had lovely cherries. And as he woke up from the shock of that memory, he realized that he hated Hiro very much and was never going to forgive him. The following day, he demanded to ride a robot, as he was determined to prove himself to everyone. But as he tried powering it up, Nana and the sergeant discovered that he was still very weak and useless like he has always been. So later that day, they told the team that they had to shuffle partners. Since Mitsuru and Nikuno had lost the desire in being partners, Nana thought they were better off separating and finding new partners with other teammates. After the meeting, Hiro decided to ask Zero Two why she had been acting strangely for the past couple of days, but she told him it was none of his business and began to leave. By the time they returned for their next meeting, Nana asked for volunteer teammates who were willing to switch partners, so Akuno told her she wanted to become Ichigo's new partner. Although the robots only powered up when both riders were a boy and a girl, Akuno thought that it was worth giving a try, so Ichigo agreed. When Nana asked if any other teammate was willing to exchange partners, Kokoro raised her hand, and Futoshi's life was shattered before his eyes. But later that day, they discovered that Ichigo and Akuno could not power up their robot. So Nana suggested that Futoshi becomes Ikuno's new partner. That evening in the boys' room, Futoshi began to cry as he was sad to have lost the love of his life. When Zoram said that Kokoro was a useless stupid moron who could not count her toes with her finger, Futoshi threatened to beat him to a pulp. And as Mitsuru appeared outside the room, Futoshi hurried to give him a punch but tripped on the floor. A few hours later, the team were informed about a great Klaxosaur that was beginning to approach the fortress, so they hurried out. As they watched the monster approach them, Zero Two began charging towards it and slashed it all the way to the top. Realizing it was unscathed, she tried stabbing it but got trapped and covered up. Luckily, Ichigo and Futoshi flew on top of it and managed to rescue her. But she flew towards it again, determined to end it, and slashed off its parts but it transformed into smaller Klaxosaurs. As it pushed off the Franks, it nearly smashed Ichigo and Futoshi, but Zero Two charged again like a deranged psycho before Hiro pulled back and saved them from getting smashed. When they wondered how they would defeat it, Kokoro suggested that they shoot it and hope to find its core. As they narrowly dodged the monster's feet, Three smaller Klaxosaurs began running ahead to the construction site, so two robots started firing at them, but they dodged the shots and continued running. However, Futoshi was able to jump on top of one and ended it with a slash. Desperate to make up for his blunder, Mitsuru charged towards the monster, but was kicked away, 
and when the monster tried smashing them, Futoshi swooshed in and caught its foot. As two robots slashed its knee, it began to fall, but started releasing a tentacle, so Futoshi began blasting it with his gun. At the same time in Kokoro's robot, she tried persuading Mitsuru to try again, but he told her he was the greatest loser in the world, but she told him that she believed in him and was hoping to be his biggest supporter. Mitsuru remembered that Hiro had ditched him when they were little, and told Kokoro that he must have been a true loser, but she told him to forget the past and look towards a brighter future. Looking to continue on her own, she decided to power up the robot, and transformed into a new monster, but immediately powered down. With Mitsuru managing to stop her, he told her she was a brainless nut job and warned her to never power up the robot on her own. At the same time, the team were destroying and slashing the monster, but it continued stretching towards the construction. When Mitsuru's robot came to life, Futoshi pushed off the monster and blasted it with relentless fire before kicking it off. Realizing his chance, Mitsuru rushed to it, and as he stuck his gun inside, he released a mighty shot into it, allowing Hiro to impale the core as the Klaxosaur rolled up and exploded into thick smoke, but the Franks was able to escape. After returning to the facility, Futoshi punched Mitsuru for being a useless arrogant moron and told him to never put Kokoro into danger, so Mitsuru promised to always watch over her. After a few days, the team arrived at a new facility called the lab where they were all created. Nana told them that they had been brought to this facility so that they would undergo medical tests, but Hiro thought that they were merely brought to the lab so that Zero Two would be tested. Just then, a new team arrived with the same mysterious dude Hiro met several weeks ago. When the dude asked Zero Two if she had turned a new leaf, she told him to screw himself and walked away from him. The mysterious dude told them that Zero Two's nickname was Iota, and that she used to be a member of their team. However, he was surprised that they were able to become her friend, and wondered if they gave her some weird injection. Ichigo told them that Zero Two was considered their teammate, and that she was a better human than the rest of them. Looking to make an impression, the mysterious dude decided to kiss her, but she blushed like a tomato and soon began to leave with the rest of the team. After having his own test, Hiro remembered his last conversation with Zero Two when he met her in the library. He had noticed her strange attitude for a few weeks and decided to ask her what was wrong with her. But she told him she wanted to kiss him and began drawing closer like a mindless robot. But Hiro spotted her fangs and freaked out. Meanwhile, outside the lab, Zero Two was kicking and smashing the soldiers that were trying to subdue her. But after a soldier shot her, she kicked off two other soldiers and fell before reaching him. A few hours later, the team began walking through the lab, and as they saw the new kids, they remembered when they were also living here. As they began watching a new set of kids inside a lab, they discovered that they were being injected with special doses to become parasites. A lady told them that the kids were being injected with higher doses of yellow blood cells, since the Klaxosaurs were continuing to increase in number. Hiro asked her if his previous partner, Naomi, had returned to the lab, but the lady told him that no one ever returns to the lab once they were gone. As the team started heading back, Kokoro decided to ask them how babies were created. Everyone thought that her question was strange, but Miku told her that they were created inside a machine. After returning to the fortress, Nana and the sergeant noticed that a few Klaxosaurs were trying to sneak towards the facility, so they told the teams to destroy them. Outside, the Franks swooshed off, and as she crashed into the monsters with a mighty light, they exploded, but when she landed, a monster knocked her off. Worried that Zero Two was losing control, Ichigo told her to stick to their plan but she took off again. As she chased another Klaxosaur determined to eliminate them all, she missed her blast but lunged towards it with her spear, ending it in that instant. More Klaxosaurs began to appear, and the team thought they were moving too fast, but Zero Two believed they were easy kills and began to chase them. Realizing she was going insane, Hiro pulled her back, but she powered the Franks forward again, and as she landed before the monsters, she ended them with her spear. However, she began pounding the ground like a deranged maniac, determined to end more Klaxosaurs, but the Franks lost all its fuel in that instant. Later that day, Hiro found Zero Two at the lake, and asked her why she was acting strange, so she told him that she intended to kill every Klaxosaur in the world so that she would become human. Hiro thought she was crazy, and tried telling her to accept herself the way she was, but she screamed at him and told him to shut up. However, he would not stop, and decided to tell her that he loves her. But she thought he was merely trying to get laid, so she pushed him to the ground, and told him that she was willing to develop plot with him, and began to kiss him. However, he managed to push her off, and tried telling her that he's really a good guy who wanted some true love. 
but she said that she was merely using him to slay Klaxosaurs in hopes of becoming human. Later that night, when Ichigo tried to speak to Zero Two, she found her destroying the mirrors, and wondered if she had lost her mind, but Zero Two merely walked away. Ichigo remembered that the mysterious dude had told her that Zero Two was putting a curse on her partners, and was causing them to die every time they rode the Franks together. He said that Hiro was a special human, and that he would soon become a monster like her if he continued riding with her. The following day, the Franks began battling another Klaxosaur in the snow, but lesser Klaxosaurs started knocking into her until Zorom and Ichigo came to the rescue. However, Zero Two had no desire of slowing down, and began charging again. But Hiro pulled back the Franks and told her to forget her obsession of becoming human. Looking to end him, Zero Two took control over the Franks, and her soul began to strangle him. She told him she was bent on becoming human so that she would meet her first darling once more. But Hiro thought that he had also met her before. So she began telling her story. When she was little, she was trapped inside a room for several months and a ghost fed her with food. But one day, the ghost gave her a picture book and after revealing the pages to her, Zero Two became enchanted by the images. Hoping to find more books like it, Zero Two decided to explore the world but ended up becoming a lab rat in the facility. On the other hand, when Hiro was little, he had always been curious to discover who he was while he was being trained to become a parasite. But one day, he came across Ichigo while she was crying, and she told him that the other kids were becoming zombies from all the injections they were receiving. She thought something was wrong with her since she was always crying, and wondered if she should take more injection until she became numb from the pain. But Hiro told her that she was special, and decided to name her Ichigo. Delighted by this name, Ichigo led Hiro to the other kids, and he gave them all a name. But as the days passed, they noticed that their friends were beginning to vanish, and the adults never told them where they were taken to. However, they continued running their tests on Hiro, and rewarded him with sweets every time he performed well. But he had several questions that no one was willing to answer. But one day, he saw an ugly little monster girl who was getting dragged into the facility. When he decided to ask an adult who she was, the lady told him to stop asking questions. Determined to find out, Hiro tried to sneak through the hallway, but was spotted by two adults who told him to return to his room. However, Hiro was bent on finding out, so he snuck out in the snow, and decided to climb up a tree to have a look at her cell. Inside the cell, Zero Two was fighting to take back her picture book from an adult. When she managed to snatch it back, Hiro smiled in delight. As more days passed in the facility, the kids discovered that several of their other friends had gone missing, and wondered if they were being abducted. However, some adults arrived to summon Hiro for another round of tests. After the tests, Hiro was rewarded with two sweets, but as he began to leave, he heard a scream in the hallway, so he hurried to see who it was, but found Zero Two screaming inside the lab as she was being tortured for some crazy vicious experiment. Horrified by the sight, Hiro fell back but a man began dragging him away from the lab. A few days later, Hiro snuck out into the snow and found his way to Zero Two's cell. After climbing up a tree, he threw a torch at the window and a cold wind blew upon the girl. With Zero Two afraid, Hiro stretched a friendly hand towards her and pulled her outside, but the branch broke and they fell into the snow. As they arrived in a withered forest, Zero Two realized she had never been outside before and began to chase a rat for breakfast. When Hiro saw her eating the rat, he tried to make her vomit it but she bit his hand. So he began to rub her head and helped her relax until she released him. As they started walking, Hiro noticed she could not speak, but wondered if she understood his words. After seeing the number 002 on her brace, he decided to name her 02, and she immediately liked it and began repeating his name. So he decided to tie bandages on her feet to save her from injuries, and they began traveling again. As they rested, he gave her a sweet, and as she tasted it, she screamed in delight. So she decided to give him her picture book, hoping he would read her the story. But a group of men from the facility began to look for them. Luckily, they were able to hide in the bushes. After continuing their journey through the snow, they snuck into a new territory and started running as the forces trailed them. While resting at a tree, Hiro told Zero Two that her picture book told the story of a monster princess who was looking to become human after falling in love with a man. However, Hiro thought the story was sad since both of them could not be together and wondered if things would have been different if they were both human. When they tried resuming their journey, Hiro realized that Zero Two was wounded, so he began licking her wound and told her that he wants to be her darling forever. Touched by his words, she began to cry and threw her arms around him. But as they thought they were safe, the forces appeared before them and knocked Hiro on the head. 
When they were returned to the facility, the doctor commanded for Hiro's memories to be erased, and this had made Zero too determined to become human, so that she would be reunited with him. Inside the Franks, Hiro told Zero too that he remembers her as the monster girl who had the picture book from all those years ago. But at this realization, Zero Two powered down the robot. Hiro told her that he had seen into her thoughts and was able to recover his forgotten memories, but he passed out in her arms. When Ichigo entered the robot, she threw her off and tried to wake Hiro up. Before long, Hiro was driven away, and Zero Two realized that she had really f***ed up. Later that day, when she tried to meet Hiro, Ichigo stopped her and told her that she would not be allowed to get anywhere close to him, since she was responsible for his critical state. When the team wondered why Ichigo was determined to stop her, Ichigo told them that Zero Two had been deceiving Hiro so that she would end him and steal his humanity, like she had done for her previous partners. Zero Two told her to mind her business, but Ichigo hurried to her front and told her that she was no longer a part of their team and would not be allowed to see Hiro anymore. When Hiro woke up, the team were happy to see him alive. However, he was hoping to see Zero Two and wondered where she was. Ichigo told him that she had stopped her from coming to see him and had been kicked out of their team. When they began to leave, Hiro decided to apologize to Mitsuru for abandoning his promise to ride with him in a robot. But Mitsuru told him that he had forgotten about it and advised him to abandon Zero Two. However, Hiro remembered that he became a shadow of his former self after losing his memories and had continued to fail all his tests until he was close to returning to the orphanage. He thought Zero Two had been his saving grace who had restored him to his former glory and was determined to speak with her again. The next day, the sergeant told the team about a new mission to destroy an army of Klaxosaurs and that two other teams would be supporting them in the battle. But Ichigo immediately raised her hand and demanded that Zero Two be cast away from their team as they considered her to be a deranged menace. Nana told her that Zero Two would be returning to the headquarters the following day, as she was being summoned already, and would be rejoining her former teammates. Shocked by the news, Zero Two tried pleading with them, and said that she desires to see Hiro before she leaves. But Nana told her that she would be leaving the following morning. When Zero Two tried leaving the room, Futoshi stood in her way, and Ichigo told her that they were determined to keep her away from Hiro forever. At the same time, Hiro tried leaving his room, but Miku told him that he was not allowed to leave his room, as they feared that Zero Two would end him. After a few hours, Ichigo arrived in his room, and told him she had brought him an apple. As she began to peel it, she told him that Zero Two would be rejoining her former team, and wanted him to stay away from her. However, Hiro told her that he could not stop thinking about Zero Two, but apologized for making the team worry about him. After eating the apples, Hiro told Ichigo that he intended to sleep, so she left him. Meanwhile in the boarding home, Zero Two knocked Goro into the window, as she was determined to find Hiro. But Ichigo showed up, and told her she would never be allowed to see him. Angered by her words, Zero Two held her shirt and told her that she merely intended to speak with him, so Goro suggested that they give her a few minutes with Hiro. Before long, they arrived at the facility, but as Zero Two entered the infirmary, she discovered that no one was inside. The team were equally shocked, but soon realized that Hiro had escaped through the ceiling. However, Zero Two thought they merely intended to trick her, and her eyes began to glow in anger. Meanwhile, Hiro was knocking on her door in the boarding home, and was eager to see her again. When he discovered that her room was silent, he decided to go inside, but realized that the entire room had become a mess. At the same time, Zero Two had knocked out the entire team and was ready to end Ichigo, but Hiro entered the room at that moment. After spotting him, she released Ichigo, so Hiro hurried to her and wondered why Zero Two was hurting everyone. Zero Two told him that Ichigo had tried to take him away from her, but was hoping to speak with him now. However, Hiro told her that she was a monster, and said that he wanted her to leave forever. By the following day, Zero Two was ready to leave, and as she began walking out, the team felt bad for her and thought that they would miss her. As Hiro arrived before the boarding home, Zero Two merely walked past him and headed into the forest. When Ichigo suggested that they head inside, she discovered that Hiro was crying, as he was sad about never seeing her again. But when he tried to chase her, Ichigo held him back, and told him that he would become a monster if he returned to her. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 She told him that she wanted to be with him forever and was willing to ride him until he climaxed into heaven. 
She said she had always wanted to be with him since they were little, and that she loved him with all her heart. But at that moment, Hiro saw Zero Two's jet as it was flying away from the fortress. The next day, the sergeant revealed a large settlement of Klaxosaurs that were destroying several fortresses and were annihilating the forces. At the sight of it, the team realized that they had never battled such a large army of Klaxosaurs and were afraid that they would all meet their doom. The sergeant told them that their duty was to eliminate all the Klaxosaurs in the settlement and to take control of it, as their success would determine the survival of humanity. Before long, the team were ready to leave, and Goro told Hiro to be proud of being a loser since he would always be one. What did he say? Ichigo said that they would be returning soon, and suggested that he took a nap since he was too useless to do anything else. Damn! On the battlefield, Zero Two's old teammates attacked and obliterated the Klaxosaurs. As Ichigo and her team charged into battle, Futoshi launched a straight blast at the monsters, vanquishing them and rushing forward to slay them in a relentless onslaught, while Zorom slashed several monsters until they were pulverized. Mitsuru blasted the monsters before him and discovered that there was a hole leading into the Klaxosaurs settlement. However, as Ichigo told the team that they intended to enter inside, the Klaxosaurs began to separate. At that moment, a monstrous super layman Klaxosaur began ascending from the ground and tossed aside a fortress as it exploded in an instant. However, the monster began approaching a new fortress, and after destroying it, it started moving towards the final fortress. But a new team stood before it with their bombs and exploded in that instant, managing to slow it down but it broke into the fortress and began releasing smaller Klaxosaurs into the city. Realizing their fortress was about to be destroyed, Ichigo suggested that they head inside, but Zero Two hurried before her and rushed into the city. As millions of monsters continued pouring into the fortress, Zero Two tried climbing into the great Klaxosaur but was knocked down. As the monsters tried devouring her, she destroyed them with her tail. As the team became exhausted, Zero Two ran across them, vanquishing all the Klaxosaurs in sight. Meanwhile, Hiro entered Zero Two's room and wondered what she intended to tell him before she left. As he looked at the taped mirror, he decided that he would no longer continue to be a loser, but would finally man up and speak to her. At the same time, the team discovered that the Klaxosaurs were taking over the city, and as Ichigo ran out of ammo, she pulled a metal and smacked away three monsters. Zorom tried fighting a monster, but was knocked back. As Ichigo slashed another, they found a training robot rushing towards Zero Two, and discovered that he was Hiro. But before Hiro could get closer to her, the monsters sent the robot crashing back, and Hiro tumbled outside. After spotting him, Ichigo told him to return to the facility, but Goro decided to power down the robot, realizing that Ichigo merely intended to keep them apart since she wanted Hiro for herself. So he told Hiro to enter into his robot and asked Ichigo to help him get closer to Zero Two. Before long, Ichigo began to power up the robot, and as they were connecting, she discovered that he only had memories of Zero Two in his thoughts. So she decided to suck it up, realizing she was hopeless of winning him over. With great speed, Ichigo crashed into the Franks, but was knocked back in an instant. However, she would not relent and rushed forward again, attacking endlessly, but it bit off her weapon. As she smacked it, it knocked her head, but she bashed into it and managed to power it down. When Hiro entered the Franks, he discovered that Zero Two had become an unrecognizable monster. However, he tried piloting the Franks, but discovered that Zero Two was in total control of the robot. Hoping to reach into her soul, Hiro decided to hold her ugly massive horns, and asked to see what was in her memories, and at that moment, he began seeing everything. After his memories were wiped out several years ago, the doctor had tried to erase Zero Two's memories, but discovered that she was protecting them. She had thought that she could become human by holding on to the moments they shared together, and began to eat her book to remember him forever. As Hiro held her close to him, the horns vanquished and Zero Two opened her eyes. When he tried to hold her, she told him to stay away, and said that she was a monster. But Hiro was not concerned, and held her close to him, saying that even though they weren't able to do it back then, he wants to go see the outside world with her. At the same time, three large Klaxosaurs launched a blast at the Franks, but as it rose high into the air, a powerful light began to glow, and the Franks started transforming in that instant. As she flew into the monster Klaxosaur, she pulverized it from the inside, and flew out the other way before a mighty explosion erupted. As she charged again, she destroyed a great army of Klaxosaurs, vanquishing them in an unrelenting assault, 
and blowing the surrounding settlement before obliterating it in a massive explosion. A few days later, the team returned to the boarding home, but the fortress was a great mess, so the teenagers had to fetch their own water and eat the food that was supplied to them. One evening, while stacking up their food, Goro told Hiro that he misses their battles with the Klaxosaurs, and was afraid that something terrible must have happened to Nana and the sergeant, since they had not seen them in weeks. However, Hiro could not understand why he would miss the constant battles that were a threat to the existence of humanity. That afternoon, while taking a walk through the withered forest, Zero Two stopped to admire a tree. When Hiro asked her if she was happy, she told him that she had never been happier before and wished to continue living with him forever. At the boarding home, the team discovered they were starting to run out of food, so Zero Two suggested that they begin hunting their own food. When Futoshi said that they had no idea how to cook, Mitsuru told them to study some cookbooks and learn to make their own meals. So they started preparing for the meal, and Zero Two arrived with a bucket full of fish. That evening, after cooking the fish, they began to eat and thought that it was delicious. After their dinner, everyone began to wonder if they had been abandoned to die in the boarding home, since neither Nana nor the sergeant was reaching out to them, and they were no longer being supplied with food. They feared that they had been left to die. However, Hiro thought they were stronger because of their numbers, and as he stood before them, he told them to consider their present state a new lesson, and to focus on their lives aside from piloting a robot and fighting in battles. That night, Zero Two showed Hiro the pictures she had painted from her old book, and told him that he had inspired her desire to become human. As she drew closer to him, she told him that he had helped her to learn the true meaning of humanity and that she no longer had to change her appearance so that she could look like a human. Touched by her words, Hiro promised to stay by her side forever. A few days later, Zero Two's old teammates appeared at the boarding home. With the team in surprise, the leader told them that the Papa, who was the head of the forces, had sent them to the fortress, so that they would check up on them. When the team were delighted by the news, he told them that they intended to stay for the night, and asked Ichigo to prepare a room for them to stay. Later that night, Zero Two discovered that Hiro was beginning to grow horns like her, and wondered if it was because he made her climax, or because he'd licked her wound many years ago. However, Hiro remained a lovesick buffoon, and decided to kiss her before telling her that it didn't matter, because the horns made them inseparable soulmates. Zero Two told him that after they were separated, she thought the only way of ever seeing him again was to become human. So after the doctor told her that she could only become one by eliminating Klaxosaurs, she had believed his words and had made it her life's mission to exterminate all the Klaxosaurs in the world. The following day, Mitsuru told Kokoro that he was afraid of ever leaving the boarding home, as he feared that they would never see each other again. Drawn by his words, she began to move her hands all over him. She told him about the book she found in the deserted city, and that the book had explained to her how she could create a baby by taking his seed into her. As Mitsuru stared in shock, she began to unzip his clothes, but he smacked her hand off. However, Zorom saw them, and wondered what they intended to do with each other, so Mitsuru told him that Kokoro was merely helping him clean his shirt. Later that day, while Mitsuru and Hiro were lying in a river, Mitsuru told him that Kokoro was starting to act strange around him, and that he got a volcano nearing eruption every time he sat close to her. Hiro told him that he was becoming a better person with Kokoro by his side, and he believed that Mitsuru was beginning to love her the same way he was in love with Zero Two. As they arrived in the boarding home, Ichigo told Mitsuru that Zorom had spotted him with Kokoro inside the garden. But at that moment, the weird guy and his team arrived. As he showed them Kokoro's book, he demanded to know why she had it in her possession. So Kokoro told him that she intended to have a baby. With everyone confused, Futoshi wondered how they could make one, since they had been told that they were all created inside a lab. Kokoro began to tell them that they could make babies the same way animals were having their own. She said that they had been told a lie their whole lives, and that they could make babies by laying together. But the weirdo told her that she had been living a dream, and that their reproductive organs had been removed while they were in the lab. However, when Kokoro doubted that he was telling the truth, he said that she was disgusting and that the world did not need any more feminists. Angered by his words, Bakuno stepped up and smacked his face. But when she tried to smack him again, Ichigo and Goro pulled her away. However, Nana and the sergeant arrived at that moment. A few hours later, in the sergeant's office, he told Kokoro that they had been spying on them for the past few weeks, 
and that it was on the orders of the doctor who had made them his lab rats. Donna told her that she knew about her intentions to make a baby, but warned her to never attempt it as it was against their regulations. Kokoro wondered why they had a reproductive system if they were not meant to have babies, so Nana told her that their reproductive organs were merely for connecting with their partner when they piloted a robot together. However, Kokoro would not accept, and demanded to know why they had emotions and desires. But Nana suddenly began to scream, so the sergeant told Kokoro to return to the boarding home. When the creepy dude showed up at the door, he wondered if Nana was starting to regain her emotions even though it had been taken away many years ago. He thought that she was no longer fitting for her position since her emotions would cloud her judgments, and threatened to report his discovery to Papa. Meanwhile, inside a Klaxosaur settlement, two adults approached a Klaxosaur princess and told her to surrender since she had lost the majority of her army. But suddenly, her screams began to echo through the cave. So in a desperate attempt to eliminate her, one adult drew his weapons and began charging forward. But as he jumped towards her, she impaled him and tossed his body to the ground. Before long, two monster pythons destroyed the rest of the men. But as the Klaxosaur princess checked the body, she discovered that it was an empty shell. That night at the boarding home, the team began to wonder if it was truly possible to create a new life. When Goro asked Hiro if he knew the process of developing plot, Hiro told him that he had not discovered it, but was looking to explore with Zero Two. However, Zero Two thought that it was a waste of his time, and told them that they were lucky to possess the ability of creating babies, as she had no such ability of her own. Meanwhile, Mitsuru arrived in Kokoro's room and found her sobbing. She told him she was sorry for trying to lead him into her bed. But as she began to leave, Mitsuru embraced her. He told her that he loves her and wants to make her happy, but she wondered if it was a terrible desire that she wants to become a mother. So he kissed her, and they laid together after a night of plot development. The following day in the facility, the sergeant told Ichigo that they would be abandoning their fortress for a new one. But Ichigo thought that the news was sudden, and wondered if there was an ulterior motive for relocating. While heading back to the boarding home, Ichigo told Hiro and Goro that she would miss their fortress. But Goro told her that their home had become a mess and that they only had a little ration of food to survive on. Inside the boarding home, Hiro suggested that they throw a wedding for Mitsuru and Kokoro as a celebration of their union. Having read a book about a man and woman tying the knot, he thought that they could replicate the same event. Kokoro said that she wants the wedding, and Mitsuru agreed that it would leave them with lasting memories of their boarding home. However, they soon noticed that Futoshi was looking sad. But as Kokoro tried apologizing for breaking his useless simp heart, he told them that he would like to officiate their wedding. Later that day, they started making preparations, and Ichigo thought that their curtains would make a fine wedding gown for Kokoro. But a few minutes later, Ichigo walked into Akuno's room, after realizing that she had been sad all day. However, when she thanked her for standing against the weirdo who said that Kokoro was disgusting, Ikuno told her that she had not done it for anyone but herself. When Ichigo wondered what she meant, Ikuno forced her to lay down, and began telling her that she wished she could pilot a robot with her, and that she was in love with her. Ichigo wondered why Ikuno felt this way, so Ikuno told her that she had loved her from the time Ichigo had given her her name. She told her that she wishes to stay by her side forever, but hated herself as she thought her feelings were wrong. However, when she began to cry, Ichigo held her close and told her to accept the way she felt. That evening, the team began to paint their boarding home, hoping to preserve their memories forever before hurrying to take a group photo. But that night, while Zero Two was looking at her drawings, a black hole appeared in the ground and monsters started crawling into the room. But as they tried pulling her into the ground, Hiro woke her up from her dream and she embraced him immediately, shaken by the memory of it. The next day, while walking through the beautiful forest, Zero Two reminded Hiro about their promise to marry each other several years ago, and told him that he became her darling after this promise. So they began to swirl around, happy and in love with each other. Inside the boarding home, Kokoro began to approach Mitsuru in a lovely white dress. After they held hands, Akuno gave them flowers and hurried to open the doors. As the couple started walking out, Zorom and Miku jingled their bells while they continued down the aisle together. They began exchanging steel rings. <laughs> One soldier knocked Zorom to the ground, but Futoshi stood in their way and told the couple to run off. But as they began running, the weirdo and his team appeared before them, and told them that they were being summoned to the headquarters for re-indoctrination. Looking to stop them, Zero Two tried punching the dude, 
but he merely moved aside and told her that she had become soft. But as she began attacking again, he dodged gracefully until another dude blocked her strike and threw her into an all-on-one battle with the team before she was punched away. When she tried fighting her way back, a guy knocked her to the ground and they held her down. So the soldiers began to pull the couple apart and knock down Mitsuru for resisting before dragging them away. With their party ruined, the team sat in silence and sadness, ashamed of themselves. By the following morning, they prepared to leave the boarding home, but wondered if Mitsuru and Kokoro would ever return to them. At the new camp, the team continued to wonder if they would ever see their friends again. But at that moment, Ichigo received a message that told her the couple would be arriving at the camp soon. Before long, they appeared at the entrance and hurried to meet the couple as they arrived. When Hiro apologized for suggesting they get married, the couple wondered what he was talking about as they had no more memories of it. Goro told them that they had exchanged vows and rings to commemorate their union. However, they had no memories of the event and could not even remember each other. So Zero Two told Hiro that their memories had been erased the same way his memories were wiped away. By the following day, the team began to wonder why Mitsuru and Kokoro's memories were erased, and before long, they realized that they were merely a pawn for the adults. When Hiro arrived, he told them that he intends to meet the papa and to ask him to return the couple's memories to them. So later that day, as he stood before the adults with the team in support, Hiro told them to return the stolen memories back to the couple. But Papa told him that it was not possible as their memories had been deleted, and that they could never be returned to them. But when he told them to return to their quarters, Futoshi challenged them and demanded for an apology, but Goro held him back. Zorom decided to approach them, and asked how many Klaxosaurs they had to kill to become an adult. But they gave him no answer, making them realize that they had no future as a grown-up. Hiro told the adults that they did not trust them anymore, and demanded for their freedom once the war was over, so Papa agreed to free them if they succeeded in the final battle. After a few days, a lady appeared in their quarters, and told them that their new mission was to destroy the remaining Klaxosaurs on Earth. However, when Miku wondered where Nana had been moved to, the lady told her that her name was Nana and that she had been appointed to be their new caretaker. Meanwhile, inside a private room, the adults told Hiro and Zero Two that they were counting on their victory on the final mission, and that it was the most important mission of all. However, Hiro was looking to prove his determination, so he assured them that they would be quitting after this mission, and would start making their own decisions. The next day, while the team were heading out, they came across Zero Two's old teammates who called them a bunch of useless losers. But Zero Two told them their mother was a useless loser. <laughs> Immediately, an alarm began to blare inside the facility. So as the old teammates arrived on the battlefield, they began slaying the Klaxosaurs. Zorum fell out of the sky and destroyed the ones before him, so Ichigo charged towards several others, annihilating them, and Mitsuru eliminated one before smacking off another. Meanwhile, as the Franks was descending deep into the ground, Hiro decided to ask Zero Two where she would like to go after the war. But she told him that she wanted to stay by his side, and reminded him about their promise to get married. As they were ready for battle, Zero Two sensed a great enemy approaching their base, so the doctor told them to leave immediately. And as soon as they left, a robot crashed inside, and a Klaxosaur serpent appeared in the smoke, revealing the Klaxosaur princess inside. The doctor wondered if she had come to pilot the star entity, which was their most powerful robot, and offered to be her riding partner. But she pinned him to the ground and stamped on his hand, telling him she had no need for him. At the same time, the Franks tried to force its way out, but discovered that the entrance had been sealed too tight. With the monster fast approaching, Hiro tried redirecting the Franks but could not control it. Immediately, the serpent rammed into the Franks, and the Klaxosaur princess raised her hand to power it down. At once, she pulled Zero Two outside, and called her a useless ripoff of their clan before throwing her off. As she bound Hiro to his seat, she checked his horns, and thought he was fitting for plot development, so she began to kiss him. Shocked by the sight, Zero Two tried hurrying to them, but a tentacle smacked her off. The princess told Hiro that she intends to drain his life force, and began to power up the robot in that instant. Putting her hand forward, the entrance opened and she flew off. As she began flying towards the star entity, Hiro wondered how she could pilot the Franks, so she told him that her clan had created the Franks before humans stole it from them. As her horns began to glow, a terrible noise spread onto the battlefield outside, and paralyzed all the robots in an instant. Through psychic connection, the Klaxosaur princess told them that they were responsible for starting the war, and said that they had been stealing the magma energy that belonged to her clan. 
Inside the facility, the sergeant wondered what the princess was talking about, so the doctor told him that the magma energy belonged to the Klaxo Sapiens who used the Klaxosaurs as their weapons. He told him that the Klaxosaurs had two riders, the same way their robots have two riders, and that their Franks had been created in a similar way as the Klaxosaurs so that they would be extremely powerful. After hearing his words through the comm, the team realized that they've been on the wrong side of the war, and that the excavation they tried to protect a few months ago was a direct assault on the Klaxosaur world, which had caused them to fight back. Meanwhile, the Franks began to descend onto the star entity, and summoned a great army out of the ground. At the same time, the team watched as a great Klaxosaur army emerged to the surface, and Klaxosaur jets flew into the sky. When the ground began to crumble, another mighty army appeared on the surface. As the jets flew to outer space, they launched mighty blasts at newer enemies, and the team wondered what the f*** was going on. At that moment, the star entity appeared before them, and weird alien jets crashed into the earth. As new monsters emerged from them, they ran past the robots and began attacking the Klaxosaurs. When a Klaxosaur launched a great blast to outer space, the new enemy Verm unleashed their own mighty blast, destroying it instantly. But the princess launched a powerful blast of her own, and vanquished the Verm army immediately. However, when she tried unleashing another blast, the star entity became too stiff to move, and the princess began to lose her powers. At the same time, two of the adults revealed themselves as leaders of the Verm army, and said that they had programmed the star entity to self-destruct after launching any attacks, since it was a formidable weapon that could destroy them. At that moment, the star entity began to seal up with walls, and strange threads started crawling on Hero and the princess as it drained away their life force. As the princess began to scream in pain, Hero decided to connect with her memories the same way he connected with Zero too. Meanwhile on the battlefield, a Verm robot began to destroy the Klaxosaur army like garbage, but the team were uncertain about who their real enemy was. When they realized that the adults had vanished, Ichigo suggested that they head for the star entity, and stop it from self-destructing, so the team agreed with her. At the same time, Zero Two wandered into the facility, but fell from her injuries. However, when she woke up, she discovered that her wound had been treated and fluid was passing into her body. She told the doctor that the Klaxosaur princess had called her a rip-off version of herself, so she wondered who she really was. The doctor told her that the princess was the only survivor of her clan, and that he had created her using her DNA. He told her that her destiny was to pilot the star entity and to save humanity from the Klaxosaurs since she was the only survivor of the experiment. Additionally, he had created her former teammates using her cells, but discovered that they had no Klaxosaur blood. Inside the star entity, Hero asked the princess who the Verm army were, as he had seen them inside her memories. So she told him her story. Sixty million years ago, her kind had occupied Earth as their home. But one day, the Verm appeared before them and told them to cast their bodies aside, so that they would become one with each other. However, when they refused their offer, the Verm declared war on their world. So in a desperate attempt to win the war, the Klaxo Sapiens began to create immortal weapons for themselves, and soon evolved to become Klaxosaurs. But by the time the war was over, their world had been completely destroyed. However, since the Verm were not human, they merely took possession of other monsters and continued their reign of terror. So in hopes of preparing for the next war, the Klaxo Sapiens decided to live under the ground and turn themselves into magma energy that became the core for powering the Klaxosaurs. Meanwhile, on the battlefield, Zero Two's old teammates commanded Ichigo and her team to return to their position in the battle, as the Papa had given them an order to fight until the very end. When Ichigo told them that the adults had all vanished, one of them threatened to destroy her. However, an army of Klaxosaurs appeared before them, and the leader slashed one. And jumping into the air, he ended another before destroying several others. So the team utilized their distraction, and snuck away from the battlefield. At that moment, an army of Verm took down a robot, and began ripping her apart before her teammates could rescue her. Angered by the sight, the leader jumped high to the sky, and vanquished them in an instant. Inside the facility, Zero Two told the doctor that she intended to save Hero, and pulled out the needles. The doctor told her that it was impossible to save him, and that she would merely be destroyed with the star entity. But Zero Two told him that Hero was the love of her life, and that she would rather die trying to save him since she had promised to never abandon him. Hoping to aid her quest, the doctor told her that he would lead her to the star entity. But at that instant, the team crashed inside, and eliminated Verm robots before spotting Zero Two. Before long, they started heading out, but Verm robots began to chase them as they arrived at a dead end, and Futoshi blasted a hole through the rubble, but his robot powered down. 
having lost all its fuel. With the enemies continuing to approach them, Kokoro and Mitsuru offered to stay behind, and Zorom decided to support them, allowing Ichigo to run off with Zero Two. As Ichigo jumped through a light, two Verm robots followed her, but she left Zero Two and the doctor at the entrance before stabbing one of the Verm. However, the second took her down and ripped her arm off, yet Goro managed to push it out of the passage and they went falling deep into the facility. As the doctor revealed his true arm, a bunch of worms appeared and ripped it off. The doctor told Zero Two that his arm contained the princess cells and that it was the only way of entering the star entity. And immediately, the door opened. But the serpent appeared behind them and opened its mouth to give Zero Two a free ride. As she climbed onto it, she thanked the doctor for creating her, as she was delighted to have known Hero. After her words, the serpent took off into the star entity and began forcing its way through before crashing inside and breaking into pieces. With the Franks before her eyes, Zero Two began to climb up and force the door open. Inside, she found Hero buried inside thick ugly threads, but when she tried waking him up, she realized that he may be dead. Determined to save him, she unleashed the powers of her mighty horns and began to kiss him. As the princess spotted them, she thought they had a special bond and decided to offer them her powers. Immediately, her horns began to stretch across the threats. When Hiro woke up inside the spirit world, he found Zero Two before him, and she told him that she had come to rescue him. As they kissed each other, the walls dismantled from the star entity. When the Verm warships launched a blast at her, she cancelled it, and began to smash the Verm robots before her, as Zero Two's soul entered into Hero's body. As she formed a great ball, she unleashed a mighty destruction at the Verm warships, vanquishing them in that instant. When the Verm mothership tried to leave, the star entity caught it, but it escaped, and the Verm promised to return again and destroy the Earth. Several weeks after the war, the surviving teenagers began to live on their own and with the fortresses destroyed, they started planting their own food. Inside one of the quarters, Hiro tried feeding Zero Two, but she was lost in her mind and had no thoughts of her own. As he pulled her sleeve, he discovered a mysterious cut on her arm. The following day, as the team were having breakfast, Ichigo told them that they have food reserved to last them for a year, and that once it was finished, they were going to starve. Futoshi wondered if using the magma energy to power up the camp would cause another war with the Klaxosaurs, but Zorom told him that they had no other choice if they intended to survive. As Kokoro began to feel sick, she told them that she would get some rest and began to leave. Later that day, Ichigo met Hiro in the hall, and wondered why Zero Two was looking sick. However, when he would not say, she told him that she cares about him, and that the team were always ready to support him. That evening, when Goro met Ichigo, she told him that they could survive on their own by farming. However, he thought they were hopeless, and told her that since they had been abandoned by the papa and the remaining adults, they had only a few months left to survive before they were all dead. Inside Zero Two's quarters, Hiro discovered that she had new cuts across her arm, and wondered how she was having these marks. Outside the camp, as the team were working on their farm, Hiro came before an explosion erupted a short distance away. As they hurried to the site, they discovered a mysterious weapon in the ground, and Zorom wondered if the Klaxosaurs intended to attack the Earth again. But Kokoro fell before them, as she was too sick to continue working. A few hours later, Nana told them that she was pregnant, but the girl was confused by her words, and the team merely stared in shock. Since she could not pilot a robot while pregnant, Nana suggested that she removes the baby, but Kokoro and Mitsuru were still confused. As they started heading back, Mitsuru asked Hiro for a suggestion, as he never thought he would become a father, but Hiro had no idea what to tell him. When he arrived at Zero Two's quarters, he found her missing and began to look for her. As he finally caught her hand, he wondered if she had regained her senses, but realized that she was the same as she merely stared at the sky. The next day, the team discovered that their plants were all dead, and wondered if they had used a wrong fertilizer on them. Before long, an aircraft flew over them, and the real Nana came out with the sergeant. That evening, the sergeant told them that the soil was beginning to die, due to the decades of extracting magma energy from the earth. He thought that they were all screwed, and suggested that they start marking their spot on the graves. But Ichigo sank to her knees as she was drained from all the work. A few hours later, as it began to rain, Hiro discovered that Zero Two had left her room again. When Goro found him in the hallway, he tried telling him about his new idea for growing plants, but Hiro spotted Zero Two outside and hurried to her. As he held her, he told her that she would catch a cold, and suggested that they return inside. But before his eyes, two large cuts appeared on her body. That night, inside her quarters, Hiro decided to check her picture book, and discovered that she did not finish her story as she knew that they would have a sad ending. 
Hoping to connect with her, Hiro tried to kiss her, but as their horns touched, he discovered that she was in a battle in outer space, and that her soul was trapped inside the star entity. Before his eyes, newer cuts appeared on her face, and Hiro looked like he had seen a ghost. That evening, while the team were delighted to discover a new ground for farming, Hiro appeared before them, and told them that he intends to rescue Zero Two from outer space. When they wondered how he intended to arrive there, he told them that he would follow the Mars orbit to the Verm planet. Although the team thought that it would be dangerous, Hiro told them that he could not abandon Zero Two, and was willing to Isekai himself for her. As he began to leave, Goro hurried to pull him back. He told him that they needed to prepare for the future, and to start cultivating a farm so that they would not die from starvation. But Hiro told him that rescuing Zero Two was his priority, as he considered her his only family. However, Goro thought that he was being selfish, and was choosing to end himself in an impossible task. But Hiro told him that he could not live without Zero Two, and was better off dead if he could not be with her. Angered by his words, Goro punched him, but Zorom swiftly restrained him. The next day, as Hiro started heading out, he saw his team before him. Ichigo told him that they intend to follow him to outer space and to help in rescuing Zero Two. At that moment, Zero Two's old teammates also offered to join the battle. As they walked away, Goro decided to apologize for punching him and told him that he was hoping to see everyone return alive. After they left, Kokoro asked Mitsuru why he had decided to stay, so he told her that he was hoping to take responsibility for her pregnancy. In outer space, the team discovered that they could move their robots much freely than usual, and thought that the battle would be a cakewalk. But while in a Klaxosaur ship, the system began to warn them about an approaching Verm fleet. However, as the Verm mothership launched a powerful blast at the Klaxosaur ship, it shielded itself from the attack. Realizing their opportunity, the team headed out, hoping to reach the star entity. As Hero flew closer, he wondered why the star entity was not attacking the Verm fleet, so the repentant weirdo told him that she needed a pilot to control her. Hoping to give him an opening, the team went before Hero and destroyed the Verm army in their way. And as they launched more blasts, they annihilated the enemies before them. However, Zorom was knocked back and they discovered a great Verm army standing in their way. Ichigo told Hiro to cut through the army with his speed. So as they charged forward, Zorom vanquished the army before him, allowing Hiro to dash through the opening. But when they reached the star entity, they were knocked aside by a mighty Verm that towered over them like a Goliath. As the robot flashed into the darkness, it descended with a mighty strike, but the Verm was unscathed. However, as it charged again, the Verm punched it aside. Realizing they were hopeless, the repentant weirdo opened the star entity and ejected Hero into it. He said that Hero had taught him the true meaning of humanity, and he hoped to meet him in the afterlife. Having said these words, he moved towards the Verm and exploded in that instant. But as the war raged on, Hiro found his way into the star entity. Meanwhile on Earth, Kokoro watched as several cuts appeared on Zero Two's body. But as she stretched her hand towards the sky, she connected with Hiro instantly. Inside the star entity, mysterious wires began to float before Hiro. So in hopes of connecting to Zero Two, he decided to hold them. Inside her memories, he discovered that she had created a depressing world for herself and thought that she was the wicked little witch from Snow White. When Hiro wondered why she was avoiding him, she told him that she was afraid of stealing away his humanity. But Hiro could care less about losing himself, and told her that he only desires to stay with her forever. And as he stood before her, he told her that he would never abandon her. Meanwhile on Earth, Mitsuru found Zero Two and Kokoro inside the rain. But when he told her to come into the camp, she told him that she wants to protect Zero Two from any harm, so that she could prepare herself for her responsibilities as a mother. Touched by her words, Mitsuru told her that he wishes to stay by her side, and was hoping to be a great father for their baby. He told her that she has given him a new purpose to live, and hoped to spend the rest of his life with her. As he showed her his ring, he suggested that they start over again, so she accepted to stay with him forever. After the rain, Kokoro and Mitsuru watched as Zero Two began to transform to stone, and they wondered what was happening to her soul. At the same time in the spirit realm, Zero Two returned to her old self and was happy to be reunited with Hiro. At that moment, the star entity began to transform into a mightier upgrade, and as she launched a straight blast, it destroyed a thousand Verm fleet like ants. So she summoned a great ball of light that vanquished a million other fleet in an instant. Before the team, two satellites emerged from asteroids, and released a thin light that opened up a portal to a different solar system. Hiro told the team that he would be going through the portal to the Klaxo universe so that he could destroy the entire Verm army. When Ichigo wondered why he wasn't retreating to Earth, 
Zero Two told them that destroying the Verm army was the only way to end the war. With the team afraid for them, Hero and Zero Two promised to return alive and entered the portal. Inside the Klaxo universe, a Verm fleet fired a blast at Zero Two, but she blocked it and unleashed a powerful blast that destroyed them in that instant. Meanwhile on Earth, the team discovered a new area in their old facility and thought that it would be great for farming, so they began to cultivate the ground. Outside the camp, Ichigo told Goro that she wishes Hero and Zero Two could see the new world they were starting to create for themselves and hoped that they were still alive in the Klaxo universe. Several months later, Mitsuru discovered that Kokoro had delivered their baby, but as he tried to touch her, she caught his hand, causing him to be overwhelmed by the sight. A few months later, the girls were reunited with Naomi, who had been forced to sleep inside a box since she left the fortress. By the time the year ended, Goro prepared to leave the camp and told them that he intends to explore the world in hopes of finding new humans in other parts of Earth. So as he bumped fists with Ichigo, he kissed her and left her blushing like a tomato before waving off. Meanwhile in the Klaxo universe, the Verm fleet continued attacking Zero Two, but she caught a mothership and destroyed it. After the battle, Hiro told Zero Two that he dreamed about his friends, and saw that they were happy on Earth. As they began to enter the Verm universe, the Verm leaders appeared before them and told them that they would be destroyed. Immediately, a mothership knocked into Zero Two, and she watched as several motherships began to emerge from the universe. Determined to fight back, she threatened to destroy them, but discovered that Hero had fallen unconscious. Looking to utilize the opportunity, the Verm unleashed continued blasts and began to retrieve the Klaxosaur bomb. As they rained more attacks on her, a massive mothership impaled her. But at the same time on Earth, Kokoro's daughter who was starting to grow up, told Mitsuru about her connection to Zero Two's statue. Realizing Zero Two might be in danger, the team gathered at the statue, and as they held their hands they tried communicating in their souls, and continued increasing as the days and nights passed. Luckily, their hearts connected with Zero Two, and their psychic voices brought Hero to life. As Zero Two pulled him in the spirit world, she told him that she was ready to take him inside of her, and kissed him. At that moment, the star entity came to life and pulled out the mothership. As she started flying towards the Verm planet, Zero Two told Hiro that she loves him and was hoping to remain with him in the afterlife. So Hiro told her that he loves her too. As they went through the enemies obliterating them, Zero Two snatched the bomb and stuck it inside the planet before punching it. But her arm was ripped off and two motherships restrained her. However, she dispelled into a new transformation. And as she summoned her weapon, she flew into the Verm planet and caused a mighty explosion that vanquished the entire world. As the planet was exploding, Hero's soul merged with Zero Two's, as they became the Jiang bird that could only fly with its partner. With the planet destroyed, Hero and Zero Two's souls began to drift into oblivion. At the same time on Earth, the team watched as a bright light shone through the sky, and they wondered if they would ever see Hero and Zero Two again. But as Zero Two's statue vanquished, Ichigo realized that they were never returning. And after a few days, the Klaxosaur fleet returned to their home inside the Earth, and were never seen again. Eight years passed, and as the team began to rebuild their world, they abandoned the Franks since there were no more battles to be fought and never forgot about Hiro and Zero Two for saving their lives. As years continued passing, the Sakura tree continued growing for thousands of years until it became the center of a giant city. あなたは誰僕僕の名前は<笑>